begin reading at verse number one. Thank God I'm still amazed this morning, amen. amen. Thank God salvation doesn't get old, amen. amen. Thank the Lord we're not saved so long that we yet uh, are no longer excited about being saved, amen. amen. Thank the Lord, thank the Lord. When I was younger, I couldn't understand how can the older saints still be excited about something that happened 20 years ago. But the Bible said, though the outward man perish, I'm getting old, my hair's getting gray, my teeth getting loose, I'm walking a little slower, though the outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. It's just as fresh as it was back in 1973 when I knelt at that altar of prayer. As 1981 as I knelt at that altar in prayer. As in 2005 or whatever your year was, if you got it for real, it's still fresh. Amen. Thank the Lord. Nehemiah chapter 6, verse number 1. Now it came to pass when Sambalat and Tobiah and Geshem, the Arabian, and the rest of our enemies heard that I had built the wall, that there was no breach left therein. Though at the time I had not set up the doors upon the gates, that Sambalat and Geshem, Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of Ono. But they thought to do me mischief. And I sent messengers unto them saying, mm -hmm. I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Mm -hmm. Why should the work cease my, my. whilst I leave it and come down to you? Our thought this morning is just don't come down. Amen. Just don't come down. Whatever you do, just don't come down. Amen. God is blessing the saints of God. God is helping the church of God. Amen. Don't get distracted. Just don't come down. We're going to break down the word of God. Amen. And let you know that the devil has nothing, my God, on you as long as you do things right. Amen. As long as you don't come down. Amen. You notice that he did not say we went up on the wall to get him. Amen. Sambalot and Tobiah, they didn't say, we went up on the wall to get old Nehemiah and say, stop building the wall. Stop doing the work of God. Stop it. Shaking him, shaking him. No, no, no. They stopped down on the ground. They looked up there and they said, won't you come? They sent my God messengers and said, why don't you come and meet us in the plan of, oh no. Thank God, oh no, we're not going to, oh no. Amen. Oh no, devil, we're not going to, oh no. Oh no is the area of negotiation. When you really get salvation, for real there's no more negotiation down in you you've settled this thing down in your soul I'm not negotiating nothing devil amen that's why the, we don't play games in the church of God forcing people to get saved the Bible said amen you got to first count the cost count the cost amen are you willing really uh, ready to give up all are you uh, ready to go all the way with God why because if you don't count the cost eventually the devil gonna try to come back and get you to renegotiate but devil I already negotiated fully the first time before I went to the altar of prayer I knew what I had to give up I knew I couldn't serve two masters I was sick and tired of being sick and tired when I went to the altar nobody forced me to get saved nobody made me get saved I got saved because I wanted to get saved I got saved because I was tired of sin I got saved because I saw there is nothing out there devil my Lord, Amen. My God, like, my like God. Our Solomon said all is vanity and vexation of the spirit my God he said I tried this I tried to pardon I tried to drink it I I tried to get in high. I tried the boys. I tried the girl. I tried all of that. There is nothing out there. Amen. That's why no one that is in sin should ever entice you. Nobody that's out there in sin, my God, should ever get you to look back, my God. Why? Because the song poor said, I tried the road of sin and found this prospect so all deceived. But I proved the Lord and joys abound more than I could believe. So here... We're going to break down this important message in the book of Nehemiah. Very, very, very critical message. Anybody that's ever been used of God, anybody that's ever made it all the way through, they were able to perceive this message and adhere to it. Just don't come down. They could not have gone up there and snatched them. I want you to know this morning the devil is strong, but he has some restrictions. The devil has some restrictions. Nobody that's ever backslidden can never say, the devil made me backslide. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Don't blame that on the devil. The saints made me. No, they didn't. Or Brother Hampton, no, don't. No, Brother Hampton didn't. Or Sister So-and-so, she did my mom. No, she didn't make you backslide. No, she's not responsible for the spiritual condition you're in. 
You can be bitter, upset, half come, do whatever you want to do. Don't blame it on the saints. Don't blame it on my God. Amen. This, that, and the other. Don't blame it on Brother Hampton. He didn't do nothing to you. But be true to your soul. Amen. This is a clear indication. If they had the power to go up and snatch them off the wall, they would have did that to Nehemiah. Because they was upset with what he did. But my God, this is symbolic of the devil having limitations. He said, tell them to get off that wall. See, that wall, Nehemiah, 20th year of Artaxerxes, the king of Persia, most powerful nation on earth. He got, he was elevated to the king's cupbearer. He was on the king's cabinet. And he was a Jew. And he knew about the people of God, the children of Israel. And he was high ranking in the Persian Empire. You can study even secularly in the historical books and you'll see the Persian Empire was one of the great empires of the world along with Egypt historically, along with the Medes, the Persians, uh, uh, the Grecians, several of the empires in the world really had no, and the Persian Empire was one of them. The Church of God child was in the Persian Empire and he began to elevate himself higher and higher and higher. He got to the point where he was on the king's cabinet. He was his cupbearer. Back then, the way they got to a king or a kingdom was through uh, assassination. And they would assassinate many times by poisoning. One of the most important jobs, they didn't have guns back then, they didn't have high-powered rifles like James Earl Ray had when he was looking to uh, assassinate, or Lee Harvey Oswald uh, and several of the other assassinators. They didn't have those type of guns back then. So they would poison the king or the ruler. So the king would say, I have to have a person over my military. He must be sharp. I need a person over my finances. That's very important. I need a person over my interior, meaning the uh, domestic uh, involvements and re relationships, so on and so forth. That's very important. But who's ever my cupbearer, before I touch anything, they actually has to protect me. They must be faithful. They must be loyal. I tell you, whenever you're dealing with leadership, one of the number one attributes that that leader is looking for, period. It's not how smart, loyalty is not blind. I mean, that leader is doing wrong. I just, no, no. Loyalty is, I'll never hear about you having a problem with me without you coming to me. Loyalty. You're talking about leadership, high level leadership. Loyalty. I've seen it in work. I, I, I was apprentice with one of the greatest leaders this world has ever seen. And I've seen how high he valued loyalty. If you ever see a breach of loyalty, keep your eye on that person. That's not saying that they're blind, that you won't ever do nothing. We can have words, we can have this, that, and the other. But I know if you got a problem, you're going to let me know it. That's loyalty. You can tell me what I need to hear. I don't agree with this. I don't agree with this. Let's talk about it. But loyalty is not you smiling in my face, but behind my back, you're trying to take me out. Yes. Loyalty is you're going to come to me and tell me. I ain't agree with this. We may better work it out. Amen. So he needed somebody that was loyal. So he said, Brother Nehemiah, I need you, Church of God child, to be my cupbearer. Don't let nothing come to me that will poison me. Nehemiah had this high ranking position. But then he heard about Jerusalem, which was symbolic of the church. He heard about Jerusalem and he, they came and some saints came and they, he, 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 he came. He didn't say, hey, who won the ball game or hey, uh, uh, the Olympic games or who did that? No, no, no. He said, how is the church? He asked two questions. How is Jerusalem and how are the Jews? How is the saints? How the church doing? How the church doing? The church okay? Its service is still inspired. Souls still being saved. It says the so and so still there. Brother so and so, the gospel still going forward. A few, uh, couple years back, congregation was going through some. One of the same children came to church, sat in the back there, sat in service, monitoring him after service. Saw him leaving. We grew up together, so I went out. Hey man, how you coming? This that, and his mother's passed away now, and so I always try to connect with the saints' children best I can, keep relationships there. But hopefully one day they'll come back and get saved. So I go up to him. I said, man, how you coming, man? Good. He said, I'm good. I said, no, no, I'm solid, Billy. I'm good. I said, what? He said, man, I just been hearing some things about the church. And I had to come back and hear Brother Hampton. Brother Hampton is the same as he always been. I'm good. He said, I'm not saved right now, but I know I want to be saved. 
And the church needs to be what the church was when I was little, amen. I need the same gospel to be here, my God. He said, I'm not saved, but I'm still. I was the church. You be shocked who following the church on Facebook. You be shocked who following the church on YouTube. You be shocked who following the church on phone call. Why? They may not be saved, but don't mess with the church. And Nehemiah was down in the Persian Empire. And he said, how is the church? And he said, how are the saints? They said, the church is not doing well, man. Grass is growing up over. Very few people getting saved. Jews are in bondage. He said, how in the world can I relax with my prestigious position when the saints are going through? If that don't burn you up, amen, if you chain up God, child, you here this morning, the church going through transition, older saints going to glory, need all hands on deck. My God. Amen. If that don't burn you up, my God, but you at home getting a big paycheck. You got my God going over to Firecracker Casino, whatever it's called, Firekeeper Casino, my God. You going to MGM, you going to the park, and here the saints are trying to get, hey, amen, this thing in position. The second coming of Christ is nigh. We got to prepare the bride. Every dot, every wrinkle got to be removed all. The Holy Ghost operating among us. We got inspired faith of the saints, amen, of, of acceptable level. And here you are on the outside doing your thing. You were raised in this truth. You know the evening like songs back and forth, forward and back. You know what the church of God stands for. You've seen miracles. You've seen power. You've seen the fellowship meet. You've seen souls getting saved. And here you are out there wasting your life for a devil that don't care about you, for a world that don't care about you, trying to be loyal to some friends that don't got your back. You need to break up with the devil you need to come back and get saved if nothing else but for Jerusalem's sake you need to say I'm getting saved I want to be with the saints I want to be here for the saints right now amen. amen breaks my heart to see those that the older saints have prayed into this world you shouldn't even be alive the doctor said you couldn't be born, but the saints gave up food. The saints quit eating. Saints gave up meals, amen. The only reason why you're here is because the saints' prayer. But now you're going to take that life and go out there talking about you doing you. You need to quit doing you and give your life to God, amen. Here was Nehemiah. He said, there's no way in the world that I'm going to relax and be doing my own thing. Get my master's degree. Get my bachelor's degree. Going on vacations all over the world. I'm doing me. Get my nails done. Get my hair done. Going here, this, that, and the other. And you know the church needs you more than ever before at this hour. Nehemiah said, my God, I'm going to the king. And I'm telling him this morning, I'm out. King, please, I might die for asking you to do this. But I need to go. Jerusalem needs me. I need to go. I can't rest. I can't rest at night with my nice house with this, that, and the other, knowing Jerusalem needs to me, my God. And that also should fire you up if you're not where you should be. My God. That my should Lord. fire you up if you're not where you should be. Here we are going through this, that, and the other. And here you are, my God, giving about 40%, 30% of what you could be. Are you serious? Are you serious? And our parents gave everything that they got for this gospel. They had to give all. They had to consecrate. Borderline lived at the church. Gave up everything, job, walked away from this, that, and the other. But here we are in 2018, almost 2019, dealing with a worse devil, dealing with a worse apostasy, dealing with more compromise than ever before, dealing with more unbelief than ever before. And you think you're going to get by giving 30%, 40%. Somebody got to beg you to be all in. My God, you should hit the altar. You should be like, my God, for Jerusalem's sake, I'm letting go and letting God. I want to be all that I could be. I'm done cutting corners. I'm done giving half part. I'm done just being part. I want to be a prayer warrior. If I don't, I'm not talking about positions. I'm talking about consecration, amen. I'm talking about giving your all, amen. I'm talking about praying and fasting, giving your life for this gospel so we can take in the baton and we can finish what the saints of old have started, amen. So here was Nehemiah. Nehemiah said, I cannot stay here. I must go. So he went. The king said, you have my blessings, you go. He went and he began to rebuild the wall. And saints, when he got down to the end, the wall, he began to rebuild Jerusalem. He's up on the wall. The wall represents salvation. Amen. The Bible speaks about he shall give unto them walls for salvation. See, the type should always make sense with the reality so or the anti-type so here the wall represented salvation 
You say, Brother Lee, make that make sense for me. I know the Bible has symbols and it says he shall give unto them walls for salvation. But how does a wall represent salvation from a practical perspective? Thank God how even in type, the church of God gospel is always backed up. So the wall, amen, in Jerusalem, you have to understand what the wall was for. The wall was to keep out the enemy, keep out stuff that shouldn't be in, and to keep stuff that should be in, in. Oh, the wall keeps stuff that shouldn't be in Jerusalem out. Amen. And it keeps stuff that should be in Jerusalem in. Thank God. Amen. The wall represents salvation. Salvation will keep stuff out your life that shouldn't be. Amen. It keeps the stuff that's in it that should be. Amen. When you get really saved, amen, amen, you get delivered. That's kicking stuff out of your life that shouldn't be. Amen. But then he gives you grace, amen, to keep the stuff in your life that should be. Amen. So here they were rebuilding the wall. And they said, Nehemiah, come down. Come down. Come on down from there. Quit building the wall. We heard about, how did they hear about it? Let's go back. Go back to verse number one. Let's take our time. Pray for us, saints. Just don't come down. Nehemiah, come on. Number one. Now it came to pass when Sambalat and Tobiah and Geshem, the Arabian, and the rest of our enemies come on. heard that I had built the wall. Saints, when you're doing stuff the right way, folk going to start hearing. Yeah. They don't go here no more. They ain't doing that no more. They ain't getting, oh, she going to the club. No, she ain't going. Well, I heard her so got saved for real. No, she was already going to church. No, I heard she got saved. She, ain't, she told her boy, if that old raggedy, she got rid of him. She don't be doing what? You see, when you're doing something the right way, folks start hearing about it. Hold on, I heard, I heard. She don't get drunk. No, she love, get, she love to get her drink on. She ain't getting her drink on on the weekends. No, the holiday, no. She, he loves smoking a little weed. Oh, no. He, at the job, telling dirty jokes and all that stuff. He don't go in that room no more. No. What happened to them? They don't be wearing their little tight pants, showing all their stuff off no more. Ooh, she used to have it. She had a good shape. She wore a little tight stuff. We used to love watching her with a little tight... No, she don't wear that no more. She can dress modest. What happened? Stuff people start hearing about when you get saved for real. Come on and read. They heard. Come on and read. Heard that I had built the wall. Yes. And that there was no breach left therein. My Lord. Though at that time I had not stood up hold the Hold on, door. hold on. He said, there is no breach left therein. A breach was a gap in the wall. Saints of God, God is blessing. The wall represented salvation. Don't come down. They were rebuilding the wall. They said, we're not going to leave a single gap anywhere. We're going to take our time. We're not going to build so quick to slap some up there with untempered mortar with gaps all in it. No, we're not. We're going to take our time and we're going to rebuild this wall line by line. We're going to line this thing up, my God. Go over to Isaiah 43, 16. Let's line this up. Isaiah 43, just don't come down. Thank God God has been saving souls, amen. amen. And saints, I don't know if you've been listening like I have, but I'm hearing a certain ring in these testimonies. <laughs> amen. See, sometimes folk just come to church and they just go on by you. Know, but I'm listening. I want to hear. Hold on, because if you got saved like I did, I should hear some of the same stuff I, I used to say when I got saved, amen. So I'm listening for that ring. Oh, Lord. I'm seeing if they're faithful to service, amen. These, these new converts are getting something, amen. Just don't come down. Come on and read. 43, 16. Isaiah 43, 16. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Which maketh a way in the sea. Come on. And a path in the mighty waters. Yes. Which bringeth forth the chariot and horse. Uh-huh. The army and the power. Uh-huh. They shall lie down together. Uh-huh. They shall not rise. Uh-huh. They are not extinct. They are quenched as told. Uh-huh. Remember ye not the former things. My Lord. Neither consider the things of old. Come on. Behold, I will do a new thing. My Lord. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He is going to do a new thing, but go to 42, 16. Amen. Come on and read. Thank God he's done a new thing in our life. Amen. Yeah. Thank the Lord. Amen. 42, 16. Come on and read. And I will bring the blind by yes. the way. That they knew not. Thank God we were blind out there in sin. Thought we had it going on, but we didn't. We were blind out there in sin. It's hard to talk to somebody that's blinded. Sometimes you just got to pray for them. They don't see it. Yeah. You tell them, don't you see you wasting blind? Don't you see you doing the same thing over and blind? Yeah. Don't you see that you want to be everything you're looking for is in salvation? Yeah. Blind. Don't you know you're not going to find it? I was listening this morning to an old preacher, a preacher talking about an old preacher, and he said that God made every human 
with a God-shaped void in their heart. When he allowed the human to come forth, he said every single one of them had a God-shaped void in their heart. That no matter what you do in life, no matter what you accomplish, only God can fill it. You can go as far as you want to go, you'll never feel at home. You'll always feel like success is right around the corner. You always feel like happiness is just right down the street. You always feel like if I could just meet her, if I could just meet him, then you meet him and you meet her and you find out they ain't it. So here he said, the blind. We were blind, amen, but he gave us sight. Come on and read. And I will bring the blind by the way that they knew not. We didn't even know. Come on and read, brother. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. Come on and read. I will make darkness light before them. Thank God I'll make darkness light before them. He made our dark lives light, amen. Thank God those dark hidden areas of our life. He made it light, amen. Come on and read. And crooked things straight. And crooked things straight. Hold on. Just don't come down. Building a wall. Binding up the breaches. Individual getting saved. Saying, Lord, my language. Make sure, dear God, that it's of God. Out of the same mouth come blessing and cursing. These things ought not be. Lord, I'm done talking that way. Lord, the body is a temple of God. Amen. Smoking. Drinking. Lord, I'm done. I'm cutting my cigarettes up. Lord, I'm pouring my liquor out. I'm binding up the breaches, Lord. Lord, I'm, I can't fornicate. The Bible said flee fornication. I can't fornicate. I can't, be, I can't be shacking. I can't be sleeping around, my God. Lord, I can't be telling lies. Amen. Liars shall have their place in the lake of fire. I'm done lying, dear God. Take these lies out my mouth. Lord, I'm done getting mad and getting attitudes, dear God. Father, you said be ye angry and sin not, Lord. Father, I don't want to be angry, dear God. Father, and sin against God, my God. Lord, we, I'm praying that you take this anger out of me, binding up the breaches, my God. Lord, my eyes, Lord God, I don't want to lust no more. Lord, I don't want to go to uh, places online that I shouldn't be going. I'm binding up the breaches this morning, my God. Father, I've done that, my God. Father, my involvements, I want to make sure that all my involvements are of God. I want to make sure where I go, what I participate in, I want to make sure it's of God binding up the breaches. Amen. I didn't get saved just to play games, my God. But Lord, I'm going through my phone. Anything on my phone that is not to the glory of God, delete, delete. I'm binding up the breaches, my, my God. God. You're doing a work, great work. Don't my come Lord, down from Lord. it, my God. You're not playing games. You didn't play games when you got saved. See, some people play games when they get saved. They just go to church, but they still do things that they shouldn't be doing. I say, if you bound up the breaches, my God, you went back home, you picked that phone, you told so-and-so, I can't mess with you no more. I'm saved now. You told your drinking buddies, I can't go with you no more. You buy, Don't come down from that, my God. Keep going forward, forward is a battle cry. Don't come down from that, my God. You got involved, my God. Even the things you listen to, you said if it doesn't glorify God, amen, I can't serve two masters. I don't want you are what you eat. If you listen to sex me up all night music, my God, amen, those are the thoughts you're going to have in your mind, my God. God. And he told us in this word, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are true, think on these things, my God. If I'm going to think right, I got to make sure what I watch is right. I can't watch ungodliness. The Bible said I, I will set no wicked thing before my eye. All the ungodly movies killing and, and sex in it. Lord, I bound up the breaches. I got rid of those DVDs. I got rid of that Netflix, my. I got rid of that stuff on YouTube. I got rid of that, Lord God. Father, social media, those things I was following, following my God. Ungodly this and ungodly I'm done with that. I bind up now. Don't come down, my God. Don't stop, amen. The devil will try to get you to back up. The devil will tell you you went too far. You didn't go too far, my God. You got to go far to get right with God. We were far away from God. We got to go far to get back to him, amen. Don't come down. Sometimes, amen, you got to cut some stuff off. Over in Matthew, he said, if the eye offend thee, cut it off. I have to cut some stuff off, and you will too, amen. You got to tell some folk, I'm done. I can't involve myself. You're not respecting our relationship I told you we were cool we may have a baby daddy issue but I told you, you don't come over here expecting sex you don't come over here owning my house we not together like that no more I got saved if you can't respect me I'll cut it off you gotta tell your friends my God don't pick me up smoking weed in the car don't pick me up with that nasty music on cut I, I cut you I can't mess with you if you don't respect me I'll cut you off you're doing a great work don't come down don't let the devil make you come down don't go to the plan of oh no tell him oh no I'm not going to oh no I'm not going back I'm not my even going to look God, back God, amen God, I'm going forward I got my too Lord, much the Lord. joy that I have the peace that I have I waited too long to get this I'm not going to 
boy with it now. I'm not playing gay. I'm not getting too close to sin. The Bible said, can a man handle fire in his bosom and not be burned? I'm not going in private places with men. I'm not going in private places with women. I'm not my torn God, around, my, my God, God. My God, my God. Working my on a great work. My God. Working on a great work. Can I come down? Go over to Exodus chapter 22. Amen. Don't come down, saints. Don't come down, new convert. Don't come down, amen. The devil can't come up there and get you. My amen. God. The devil can't come up there and snatch my you. God. Amen. Just don't come down. Be encouraged this morning. Come on and read. Exodus 22, verse 21. Verse 1. Exodus 22, verse 1. If a man shall steal an ox yes. or a sheep and yes. kill it or uh -huh. sell it, he shall restore five oxen Come on, for read, an ox read, read. and four sheep for a sheep. Read. If a thief be found breaking up yes. and be smitten that he die, yes. there shall no blood be shed for him. Read. If the sun be risen upon him, there shall be blood shed for him. Read. For he should make four restitutions. My Lord. If he have nothing, then he shall be sold for his theft. Verse number five. If a man shall cause a field or vineyard to be eaten. Come on. And shall put in his beast. Yes. And shall feed in another man's field. Come on, still his field, read. Of the best of his own field. Read. And of the best of his own vineyard. Yes. Shall he make restitution. Read. If fire break out. Uh-huh. And catch in thorns. Yes. So that the stacks of corn or the standing corn or the field be consumed therewith. Come on. You he that killeth the fire up. shall surely make restitution. Rest. Whoa. Don't come down. See, saints, when we talk about really getting saved for real, yeah. see, there, there's, a, there, there's elements and depths to salvation. See, there, 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 there is a forgiveness. There's a repentance. Lord, I'm sorry I did wrong. I'm done. I'm not playing games. I'm turning from all I know to be wrong. See, listen to me. Churches aren't preaching a gospel that is able, for the most part, to get people fully reconciled back to God. See, when you mess with the doctrine, you're messing with an experience that that doctrine was to produce. Okay, give me, let me give you an example. When you commit sin, you're basically in a, you're in a relationship with God. You go out, you commit sin, or you come to the age of accountability. You know what sin is. You sin. You go out. Now your tree is bearing fruit of sin, lying and stealing and this, that, and the other. So now you hear a gospel message. You want to come back and get saved. You cannot just go back and say, God, I want you back. I'm, we're in a relationship again. That's not the way it works. It's a relationship. That's why we don't advocate joining church. Anybody want to join? No, no, no. You got to get right with God. This ain't about nobody's church. I'm thankful it ain't about nobody's church. They may not like me that day. They be actually voting. Everybody want to, what if they don't vote me in? Thank God it ain't predicated upon man. So here, if a man cheated on his wife, if a man messed up in a relationship, he wants to get back in good with that relationship. You know what he got to do? He got to act, repent. He got to be broken and contrite for what he did. I'm so sorry. I cheated on you. I messed up. I'm good. I'm so, I'm done. And all involvement that you doing, you doing him, and you can't keep doing him. You can't keep involving yourself with that. That's sin. You can't keep sinning. You, you got to come to God. You can't just get back in the house. See, you got one of them old school mates. You ain't going to go out there and mess around cheating with everybody you know, and come on in and just, and she make your bed. She back in the old, 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 old days. Sometimes them women, they, they would know you out there doing dirt. They're going to make you some food, make you, make you some meal. Knowing you done stayed out all night long, come back, smell, lipstick on your collar and everything. Go, come on in, honey. Come on in. Come on in. No, God ain't like that. You're going to repent before you get back up in here. Now, the beautiful thing is, it doesn't matter what you've done. God is faithful. You meet the conditions. It don't matter how you've done. You meet the conditions. God is faithful. As far as the east is from the west. See, some folk, they got hard hearts. You did too much dirt. You ain't never, you ain't never, I ain't never going. Thank God God ain't like that. But you're going to have to meet the conditions. You meet the conditions. You broken. You contrite. You ask God. 
sorry. I, I godly sorry. I'm so sorry, God, for what I did. I'm not sorry. See, some folks sorry they got caught. I'm sorry, Lord, I did wrong. Lord, I, I'm, I'm so sorry, dear God. Some folks is on a deathbed. They just want to, they don't want to go to hell. But you got to be sorry to what you did wrong. And God is looking at your heart. He sees that you're sorry. And then you got to let him know, Lord, I'm turning my back on all of them. I'm done with that. And see, when you have faith in God and you genuinely repent with brokenness and contrition and godly sorrow and you turn from sin, see, God looks at your heart. He knows. See, some folks can fake cry. They can fake cry, but they really ain't broken. They really ain't done with sin. Soon as church is over, they're going right back to that raggedy boyfriend. But see, sometimes folks may not cry a lot, but on the out, but on the inside, they broke it up and they sorry. God will look down on your heart. Amen. And when he sees that you met the conditions, he'll open the door and allow you to come in. He said, with his spirit, we'll bear witness with your spirit. He sees your spirit is right, and he'll bear witness that you got a breakthrough. Come on back in. He'll hug you. He'll love you. He'll warm you, my God. That's a piece of it. But there's also another piece. And it says here in the Bible, if you stole the man's yard, if you stole the man's sheep, there's something called restitution. Hold on. You be, I ain't leaving no breach. I asked God to forgive me, but there's some things I did in my life when I was in sin that I need to straighten out. I'm sorry. I got I, I to get right with God. And you can ask this person, this person, that person. At the end of the day, you got to get one-on-one -on -one with God. And you got to say, Lord... What in my life in the past that I involved myself in do I need to straighten out? Some stuff, you say forgiveness, and God clears it up. God. See, there's no way we can remember every single thing we did. See, some stuff, you just forget, but some stuff, God going to bring to your attention. I remember my God, uh, uh, I had some towels from a hotel. We were playing basketball, and we had stayed at this hotel in some state, and, the, and I, I'm, I'm drying off. I mean, these towels were thick wonderful and on the front it was like they, they it was almost like they knew i was coming now i got done drying off the towel actually said on it hampton i said man look at this these big old fluffy white towels that say my name on them and a couple of few of them made it into my duffel bag some type of way well i get saved a little while later i'm up at my parents house Brian, all oh, praise the Lord. My, oh, I'm so joy. I'm saying, glory be to God. Can't wait to service. Oh, pray. Oh, uh, it's something in my heart just so. Oh, oh, oh. My dad walk out. What's where that joy at? Where all that joy? It, the joy is still there. It's just some kind of blocking a little bit. So I grabbed each one of the tiles that I had taken, put them in a little sack, went on over to the hotel that happened to have. The same name on it, Hampton Inn. I walked in there, felt embarrassed. Sometimes you feel embarrassed. I felt embarrassed. I'm like, man, something, something told me, I'm going to leave them there and I'm going to take up front. <laughs> but the Holy Ghost just said, no, you're not. You go there, ma'am, is the manager here? I'm the manager. <sighs> <sighs> you know, sometimes when you try to fix your words and be out, <laughs> well, you know, one day uh, I was, listen. I stole these. So you, why well, I kind of uh, helped myself to you know you correct the words. I, I kind of helped myself to these. Uh, well, I, I, oh, I accidentally forgot they were. No, no, no. ma'am, I took these towels. They did not belong to me. I'm sorry I took them. I'm asking you to forgive me. Here's the towels back, and I had to make it right. But when you are leaving no breaches in your relationship. You're dealing with everything you know to be wrong. Getting straight everything you know to get straight. Everything in my life that I know that is not to the glory and honor of God that I need to clear up. My God, and God put his finger there because God won't move his finger until you do it. You can try to over it, shout over it, run over it. Hey, man, it's not my job. I ain't going to, don't sit there, but leave it. No, 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 no. You got to deal with God. If you don't want to leave no breaches whatsoever, you want joy down in your soul with some real power working. My God. See, the devil's afraid of you leaving no breaches. That's where you get power to get other folks saved. That's where you get power to pray for the sick. That's where you get power where the saints, my God, can fully receive that glory that's down in your soul. It's not manufactured. You're not commending yourself. The Bible said, he whom the Lord commendeth. You don't got to say nothing. You can just walk in a room and they can sense, my God, the power and inspiration from you. So here... When you are dealing with that wall and you're dealing with it the right way, don't come down. You don't went this far, don't come down.
Don't let the devil get you to bag up now. I don't care what he say. You ain't say you did the devil. I, listen, let me give you this and encourage you with this. If you didn't have nothing, he would have left you alone. One thing you need to understand about the devil. The devil don't waste no time. He's too busy. He's way too important for that. He only go mess with those that are leaving no breaches. If you half in this thing, half right, the devil will leave you alone and go over to somebody that he knows is going to end up causing him problems. All right, let's go over to uh, Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12, 22. Just don't come down. Hebrews 12, 12, 22. I'm going to read. But ye are come to Mount Zion. Uh-huh. And unto the city of the living God. But ye have come to Mount Zion. We didn't come to Babylon. Thank God you've come to Mount Zion. Amen. Where God dwells. Amen. Come on and read. And unto the city of the living God. The city. The church. Amen. The city of the living God. Jerusalem. The heavenly Jerusalem. The heavenly Jerusalem. It's like Nehemiah was building that Jerusalem. Thank God for the Jerusalem today. Heavenly Jerusalem. Come on and read. And to an innumerable company of angels. They say, believe we got to go back to natural Jerusalem. All the Jews and all the Christians are going to assemble back at the natural Jerusalem there in Palestine. And then the style of the. Listen, the word of God says clearly. That the weapons are warfare, are not carnal. We're not going to be in no natural battle. The Bible said the kingdom of heaven comes without observation. The Bible said. Amen. Meat and drink shall not inherit. It's not a physical, it's a spiritual. This is a spiritual operation now. The old was Sinai, the physical. Zion is spiritual. That's why I said a heavenly, sit together in heavenly places. Come on and read. To the general assembly and the church of games with your soul, amen. You may not like it, it may not feel real good, but it'll get you to heaven, amen. Amen. Thank God for the truth, amen. I'm not going to come down. I'm not going to compromise. Thank God the real Mount Zion, God's going to have a remnant, not a remnant, my God, that's doing things different than they did back in 94, than they did back in 84. Thank God the Bible said walk in the light as he's in the light. We got to keep walking in the light. We can't back up on light, my God. Some people will leave, but the Bible said they went out from us because they were not of us, amen. Thank Thank the Lord. If you love this gospel, you won't leave this gospel, my God. The Bible clearly says in, in God's word, amen, that he'll have a remnant in this end time. And there's nothing the devil can do about it. He said, upon this rock, I'll build my church. And the gates of hell cannot prevail against it, my God. When you're a part of Mount Zion, don't you come down. Don't you renegotiate. Don't you reconsider nothing, my God. You walk in the light as he's in the light. You ask God for grace so you can measure up to the gospel. Don't change a thing, my God. My God, don't come down. Stay in Mount Zion. Yeah. Yeah. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Amen. Go ahead real quick to Proverbs 22, 28. Just continue to be church of God. Don't come down, saints. Don't come down, saints. You're doing a great work, saints. Don't come down, my God. Don't come down. The devil can't come up there and get you. Just don't come down. Don't let nobody talk you out of it. Amen. Don't let anybody confuse you. Amen. Stay on your knees. Stay in the word. Amen. And don't come down. Amen. Even after the death of a great leader, the devil comes sometime and say, won't you renegotiate this? Won't you change this? But my God, don't you come down. Settle it down in your soul. Amen. I'm going all the way with the saints. Come on and read. Remove not the ancient landmarks. Remove not the ancient landmarks. Once again, saints of God, you have to understand God's word. God's word is so settled. It didn't say don't let somebody. It said remove not. The only way the ancient landmarks can remove from your heart is because, amen, you did it. Somebody, my God, deceived you, this, that, but you moved it. Amen. You listened to their foolishness. Amen. He said remove not the ancient landmarks. Read. Which thy fathers have set. You could tell where a place was by the landmarks. Yes, you see that big old rock, that big old oak tree, that apple tree next to it, this and the other. Amen. You could tell where it was by the landmarks. If you move the landmarks, you must want to get lost. Yes, you say, hold on, I don't know where it's at. Thank God you can tell Mount Zion by the landmarks. Amen. Modesty. Amen. Okay. That's one. All right. Let me keep looking. Do I say, oh my, I hear divine healing preach. Okay. The landmarks. My God. Amen. Marriage is for life. Okay. Okay. I'm hearing the landmarks. Don't mess with the landmark. Oh, it's beautiful. Amen. The landmarks. I'm seeing some landmarks. Hold on. Remove not. Don't come down. After the death of a leader, 
It said that the fathers have said. One person was talking to me, I think it was yesterday, maybe been the day before, and they called and they were crying. And they said, but Lee, you understand how bad that I miss Pastor Hampton. And I'm always taken back when I hear somebody say, I don't understand. They said, but you don't understand. I don't understand. Okay. You, you, okay. No but, Lee, but Lee, hold on. You understand. Me and Brother Hampton had a relate. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. Amen. I feel you. Uh-huh. You don't want, but I understand what they're saying. They said, Brother Lee, you understand how bad I miss Pastor Hampton. Then they hit me with something, though. They said he was like a father. That thing hit me so deep. See, you can have somebody else come in and preach. And the gospel is good. It's good. It helps you out. You can have somebody else pray. As long as the prayer is effective, you good. But a father is different. A father has a way. They said I would be going through something, and just to hear his voice, it was like, I'm good. You know, a father has a way of just showing up. A father, you may be in a race, you running uh, against the other boy. You look up, your dad down there. Pew! You done left everybody. My God, my daddy's there. Amen. Daddy's here, my God. You get stronger, my God. You mess with some boy, mess with you. Leave me alone. Leave me. Your daddy show up. You, get off me. Get off me. Get off me. Amen. Don't mess with me. Amen. My daddy's here. My daddy's here. Amen. That's why, amen. If you got any sons, you got any children, and you're a father, make sure you're spending time with them. Amen. Nobody can replace daddy. I love mothers, single mothers. I believe they got a special place in heaven if they're saved. I believe they got a special place in heaven. A single mom. I see me and my mom, my wife. And how much of a tag team, how bad I need her, how bad she needs me, how we bounce raising children off. We play this and then she do this. Sometimes they, they, they struggling with her. I come in and lift her up. Amen. Sometimes they're struggling with me. And I see a single mom got to deal with all of this. Sometimes I, gotta, I even pray for them because when you're trying to raise a church, you got home. They're getting a little bit older. They got attitudes and they want to do this and they want to go here. And they go, sometimes my God, I need some reinforcement. I'd be like, oh, I, no, trying to fit. And my wife says, no, 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 no. We're not doing that. I'm like, oh, I needed that. <laughs> I needed that. Amen. We ain't doing that. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you just need that little reinforcement. Amen. But here it said, remove not the ancient landmarks that the Father has set. Saints, the saints of old set some landmarks. Go to Joshua. Go to Joshua. I'm sorry. Joshua chapter one. We cannot come down. We cannot come down. We cannot come down, saints. God is blessing. We must double or redouble our efforts. In your life, when you're making a move for God, don't let people get you off course. Don't let people. You made a move and a commitment to God. Don't let people get you off course. Any friend that is trying to get you off course from doing things right, you let them know. I'm not renegotiating. Jesus even said in his word, if father or mother, sometimes family member will come against you. You got to have it settled in your heart. I don't care if I got to go alone. I'm going alone. But if I have to go alone, I'm going alone. I'm not coming down. I'm not with children. I love you, honey. I love you, sister, brother. I love you. But you will not come between me and the gospel of Jesus Christ. I appreciate you tremendously. I respect you. But you will not get me to come down. Sometimes it's not them. The devil is using them. Sometimes it's not your child. But the devil is using your child. Sometimes it's not your brother, but the devil is using your brother. Sometimes it's not your spouse, but the devil is using your spouse. Trying to get you off your, uh, off your wall. You got to have it settled. I'm sorry. This thing is settled in my heart. I care who you are, friend or foe, whatever else you want to say. But the Hampton had to deal with that many a time. Had ministerial buddies that were real close to him, eating at his house, this, that, and the other. But they came to this gospel. He said, I have no friends. When it comes to this gospel, I know no man after the flesh. I'm standing for this gospel. I'm not coming down. And you got to have that same resolve down in your heart. Come on and read, brother Frank. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all the people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place, he told Joshua, I have a place that the people must go that the saints of yesterday prepared the way for. <sighs> my God, my God. There is a place for you to go, for the people of God to go, that the saints of yesterday prepared the way for. They are now up in glory. They are now counting on you. 
They are not, my God. Their investment, their tears, their hours, their sweat. My God, some of their lives were given. My God, to give you a responsibility. Don't come down. Don't fumble the ball. Don't drop the baton. Here he said, it's a place for you to go that Moses and the saints prepared the way for Joshua. Don't y'all mess it up. Verse number three, he said, every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon, I've given it to you. Verse number seven, only be thou strong. Be strong, don't be weak. If you're going to stay up on that wall, if you're going to stay up and have that church of God experience, young people, you got to be strong and be very courageous, be of good courage, I'm sorry, and be very courageous. Don't let fear take hold of you. That thou mayest observe to do according to all. Don't come down. Don't change nothing. Don't come up here talking about no wedding bands. My God, God the word of God dealt with that. He said, wearing of gold, jewelry, this, that, and the other. That's the word of God. That's the word of God. And I'm just going to tell you. And this is what you'd be encouraged with. You go back far enough. About 95% of churches taught what you believe today. Right. You wouldn't find nobody, nobody coming to church with no tight pants on. No women doing no men. In America, America was so godly, America didn't do it. It was a difference. The Bible clearly always had a difference between male and female. It was an honor. It was, it was an integrity thing. But the world got worldly. They began to get far from God. And it's a shame, but they took the church right with them. They took the church right with them. But thank God, God going to have a remnant. Amen. That's going to hold it just like the original. You say, brother Lee, things have changed now. There's a new truth now. Listen, things, you might have went from a land phone. I tell my children sometimes, we got this little book about, it's a, it's a word book, like teaching children, a whole, Richard such and such's biggest word book ever, whatever. So we go through and we read it. On one of the pages, it got a phone, and the phone got these things around it. They be looking at that like, what in the world, a phone? That, what, 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 what is that? What, what is that? And it got a little cord around it. What's this? When I was young, we had this phone in our house. We thought we had it going on because one of the phones in the kitchen, it had push button. But the other phones, you had to do like this, seven... And wait, and it's like da 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 eight da 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 seven da 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 da. But the one in the kitchen, we thought we had it going on. We the Hampton, we got it going on. You go up in there, you just push and and now they look at both of those like, what's that? What 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 is that? So technology will change, but truth don't. See, some people have been confused because they get an old, slick preacher. He would say, I used to do this, but now I do things different. And, I, and they all, because it caters to the flesh, so they're happy. But Joshua, he said, don't change nothing. There are some principles in God's word. The principles of God's word. The Bible said Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's coming back for the same thing he left. So here he said, and see, sometimes saints... Some young people, they say, I can't wait till they get out the way so we can change some stuff around here. Your mindset got to be my God. No, young or old, ain't no two gospels. It's one gospel. Amen. The older, my God, you can't be like, man, I'm getting tired. I'm getting weary. You better be like Joshua and Caleb. Lord, renew me. <laughs> Give me one more mountain. You better be like Brother Hampton. I'm going off on my white horse. I'm not changing nothing, my God. I'm not rearranging nothing, my God. And saints, I really believe with everything within me that the young people of today here, amen, they don't want to change nothing. I believe they want to hold it. I believe they want it just my like God, we had it back Lord, in the day. We just don't come down. Amen. Just keep doing what we're doing, amen. amen. I believe the older saints, they're not weary. My they're not God. tired. My amen. God. They're asking God, Lord, give me a fresh touch. Lord, Lord, give me some Lord, fresh rain. Lord. Lord, give me a renewal one my more God. time. Lord, may I go off this thing, my God, with a amen. testimony. We just got to keep it in place. The youngest going the my oldest God. going we just got to stay unified and go together my god amen 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 my god sometimes backsliders come back and hosea 7 16 don't go there he said they came back but not to the most high 
We want to encourage backsliders this morning. If you're not saved, amen, you're a backslider, let's come back this let's morning. Let's come back this morning. Amen. Let's come back amen. this morning. Amen. Let's come and get up on the wall. Get your spot on the wall. My God. Amen. We need you this morning. My Lord. Amen. My Lord. Those backsliders my Lord. that have come back, my God. my God. Amen. Keep binding up the breaches. Amen. Amen. Keep, amen, walking in the light. Amen. You don't come back as a newbie. Brother Hampton, this is the same gospel he preached. He said, you don't come back as a newbie. You were saved, my God, had all this light. You come back, my God. No, you're coming back to what you left. My Lord, amen. My you're Lord. coming back to the same thing. And I believe, amen, God is blessing, my God. The remnant that is coming back, they're coming back correct, my God. Coming back with a good attitude. Now, just don't come down, amen. Amen. Don't let the devil get you discouraged, amen. You're more than capable. Every place the sole of your foot shall tread upon. My As we God. close it out, how didn't he come down? I'm just going to quote these. One, they had discernment. He said in verse number two in Nehemiah, he said that they plan to do me mischief. He discerned. They don't mean me no good. You got to be able to discern. Devil, this don't mean me no good. You got to discern. This relationship, uh -uh, this relationship trying to get me to come down. You got to be like, hold on, I'm not getting too close. I'm getting too close to that. Some people have messed up because they had a friend. He's just a friend. You better be careful. They stay a friend. And don't become a friend. You got to have discernment. Amen. Number two, it said, he, they resolved. They said, I'm not coming down. You got to have it resolved in your heart. Yes. Though mother, father, whoever, I'm not coming down. If it cost me my life, it took me too long to get this. I'm not coming down. Amen. Number three, he had a clear vision. He said, I'm working on a great work. You got to have it in your mind made up. This is a great work. This is worth fighting for. This great salvation. One brother, uh, after Friday night Bible study, we was in the back, front, back at the, uh, the Bible study on Friday. The brother came and he said, Billy, he said, man, why did I wait so long? He said, man, I was out there over 20 years, I believe it was. Why did I wait so long to come back? See, the word of God said, oh, taste and see. In order for you not to come down, you got to have a man, a clear vision. He said, I'm working on a great work. Saints of God, people want to be saved. Amen. They want what you got. Saints, when you were in sin, you wanted to be saved. Don't let the devil, amen, cause some trial that you're going through or some temptation to cause you to lose your vision of how great this salvation is that you got. My Whatever God. you got to do, don't come down. However you have to do it, don't come down. Whatever stands have to be taken, don't come down. Don't come down. Whatever you have to do, amen, say, God, renew me, but I'm not coming down. You got to cut some stuff off, I'm cutting some stuff off. If I got to tell some people, amen, if I got to ask God to forgive me, there's some, if there's some breaches I need to bind up, there's some things I'm still, there's some things I'm not. See, saints, I could have stopped calling some people, but some people I had to declare my stand to. I had to bind that breach up. I said, listen, I'm done. I'm done. And once I dealt with it with finality, that temptation was so much easier. That, once I dealt with it. Once I deal with it, see, if you don't deal with it, you don't take your stand for faith, see, I'm trusting God. Long as you're wavering, the devil will try to, as soon as, you, as, soon as that symptom comes, you're going to die. He knows that there's something in you that's still kind of wavering. But when you settle that thing in your heart, you ain't going to die. Sometimes the devil may, uh, uh, God may even allow that symptom to get stoned and say, that's just so he can get more glory. God got you. God got you. God, God, you get a real testimony. That's what faith is. Faith is when you don't see. It looked like I was on my way out of here, but God comes in. You, amen. You got to seal that thing. I ain't coming down. Once you settle that thing in your heart, Lord, I'm standing for truth. Lord, I'm standing for faith. Lord, I'm contending for the faith that the saints once delivered. Long as you stay up there, the devil can't come up there and get you. You got to stand and say, I'm not coming down. May God bless the saints. Shall we stand? My God, my God. As we sing a verse of song, if there's any this morning that need to be saved, any need, a resolve renewed, I'm not coming, just don't come down. God is blessing the people of God. Just don't come down. God is calling saints higher. Just don't come down. God is taking saints deeper. Just don't come down. God is doing a work, saints. God is doing a work. But this morning, if we have to renew our resolve, Lord, I'm not coming down. Amen. Lord, I'm not feeling the best in my body, but I'm not coming down. I need you this morning. What page are we singing?
Let's sing it. Just don't come down. Anyone not saved, let's make our move back to God this morning. Is there anyone this morning that's gotten away from God that want to come back? Let's make our move. I have decided to follow. I have decided to follow. I have to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Though none go with me, I still will follow. Though none go with me, I still, though none go with me, I still, no turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross. Is there anybody else that needs prayer this morning? The world, the cross, no turning back, no turning back. Every head bowed, every head bowed. Father, we thank you for your word. We appreciate you, dear God. Thank you for the moving of your spirit. Thank you for the troubling of the water. Thank you for this move that the saints have been making. Amen. Thankful, dear God, the saints, amen, building a wall in troublesome time. Thank the Lord for the de uh, dedication of the saints, my God. Father, dear God, we pray, dear God, you renew our commitment. We pray, dear God, you give us, dear God, the resolve, the discernment, dear God. Father, dear God, not to come down, dear God. Father, the devil may try all he want. Father, the devil may try to discourage, my God. The devil may attack our bodies, my God. The devil may try to attack our homes, my God. But, Lord, we're letting the devil know this morning, amen. We are not coming down. We are not renegotiating. We are not, amen, looking back, amen. We are not not giving up amen father we're going forward forward is the battle cry onward onward to our home on high we shall conquer for the Lord or die father we thank you for the refreshing this morning thank you dear God for the commitment of the saints my God we won't remove the late ancient landmarks that the saints of old have set my God we have too many examples too many witnesses amen to let go now we don't have much further to go now. The devil knows time is running out. Prophecy has all been fulfilled. God is soon sending his son Jesus to retrieve his bride. We pray, dear God, you bless those that aren't in the ark. Maybe there's a backslider this morning that didn't have courage to come up during the altar call. We pray, dear God, maybe after service they'll say, I want to come back home. I've been like the prodigal son, the prodigal daughter, but I want to come back home. And Lord, we're thankful as long as they come back right, there's still room at the cross. Father, those that went to the prayer room, those that, Father, they got in need of a spiritual blessing, Father, we pray you grant that. Grant it, dear God. Solidify the camp of the saints, Lord God. Take us to that next level. As we, dear God, rededicate our commitment, dear God, this morning, we are not coming down. We're not backing up. Love you, Lord, from the depths of our heart. Thank you for your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated.